guys, my name is Sabina. Yes, I'm wearing the same outfit as in my last video because I'm recording this back to back. And yes, these are all of the books that I've collected in the past couple of months. I believe that at home, I still have more that I haven't hauled yet because my serious last book haul, not my Dublin book haul, but my serious last book haul I did in January. <laughs> and it's now May and I have no self-control. So this is the pile that I have. I'd say let's just get on with it. I will not have a detailed synopsis for all these books, but if you want to find out what the story is behind all of these beautiful covers and pages and stuff like that, I say go check out Goodreads because that is the best source for finding synopsis. I'm just gonna get right into it because this video will probably be very long and I don't wanna make it any longer than it has to be. So first off, I have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black and I have already read this book. I feel so good about this. This was in the January fair loot box and I was really excited to read this because all of a sudden everyone was hyping about it while I had just recently heard of this book. This is a fairy story, not a fairy tale, but a fairy story and I really enjoyed myself while reading this. I've heard kind of mixed reviews. A lot of people were expecting more of it than they got, but I loved the writing style of Holly Black. The first 200 pages, this story wasn't that fast paced and there wasn't a whole lot of action. There were definitely big moments which happened, which I really love. This is basically about Jude and her sisters and when they were younger, her parents were murdered by this really big uh, general fae. They were taken back to the fairy world because one of Jude's sisters is half fae, half human, and Jude and her sister have always wanted to belong and Vivian, her half fae, half human sister, hasn't been wanting to do that and wanted to go back to the human world. You pretty much get to know the whole fae court and magic and things that start happening. I don't want to tell you anything more. There's also this very douchey and mean prince called Prince Cardin. Yeah, I don't want to say anything more. I would say just just go and read it. The next one is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabowski. I bought this because it was five euros on Amazon. It's a tiny paperback so I should be able to get through this. I have seen the movie but it has been five years and this is just a classic YA story. This book is about 10 years old, maybe even older. So this book is basically about Charlie and I believe his mental health story. I've heard nothing but great things about this book. I think this is also like a sort of YA modern classic which I just need to read. Then I have a very interesting book and that is Air Awakens by Elise Kova. This I think is more of like a self-published book. I don't know. I've never heard of this publishing company. It's published by Silverwing Press and I've never heard of that. But it's the first one in I think a five book fantasy series. I've heard a couple of people talk about this and they absolutely loved it. I've been very interested in this book for I think about a year or two years and that's mainly because of the cover. It's really pretty. I love the artwork on this one but I've heard recently that the story is also amazing so that's nice right? <laughs> Next I have Dumplin by Julie Murphy. I also have Ramona by her. This is her first like very big book which she became well known for. This book is supposed to be a little bit about body positivity but I've also heard a lot of people say that it isn't that body positive. I just want to know what my own feelings are about this contemporary book about a big girl and her trying to come to terms with her body. I put this book in my most anticipated book to movie adaptations because I believe that this year this book is going to be turned into a movie featuring Jennifer Aniston, my hero. I love her. That is also one of the reasons why I should pick this one up this year. And the hardcover was cheap. That's by the way with all of these hardcover books. They were really cheap. I heard amazing things about them so that is why I wanted to pick them up. Just letting you know in advance. Then I have Want by Cindy Pond and I have never heard anyone talk about this book but my friend found it on Amazon when it was really cheap and then I read the story the synopsis and I thought that this would be a very interesting read. Jason Zhu survives in a divided society where the elite use their wealth to buy longer lives. The rich wear special suits that protect them from the pollution and viruses that plague the city while those without suffer illness and early deaths. Frustrated by his city's corruption and still grieving the loss of his mother who died as a result of it, Zhu is determined to change things no matter the cost. So there's a little bit more of synopsis, but I think that is like the main thing that intrigued me the most about this story. I have Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab, and I bought this, I think, already in January. This is the sequel to this savage song by her, and I 
enjoyed it but for me it definitely did not live up to the hype i do think that whenever i want to pick up this one i do need to reread this savage song to get back into the world and get back into the story because i'm really trying my best to start a duology or series and then trying to finish it as soon as possible and not continue on with other series throughout that as well because then it just takes me years to finish a book series i've heard that people who did not really like this savage song as much as everyone else really enjoyed this book that is why i wanted to pick it up and finish the duology because if this one would have been crap i i wouldn't have finished the duology to be honest so then i have a book which has a very interesting story behind it and that is song of of the Current by Sarah Tolkser. The postman who delivered this book uh, was too lazy to give it to my neighbors when I wasn't at home so he saw that the window to the kitchen was open and he like threw the package through the open window in the kitchen and it fell into the sink which was wet because there was water in the sink. So this book I don't I don't think you can see it but the dust jacket is damaged like quite bad. It is wrinkly there is a big tear in it. I was really really mad at the post office surface so I bought this but because it was damaged I got my money back through Amazon which was really nice because the book underneath it is absolutely fine. Because I'm a book lover I cannot handle it when my dust jacket is ruined. <laughs> I just I can't deal with it. This is a fantasy story about rivers and gods I believe. The internal heating of my camera just got too high because there is the sun. I have a book which I just totally bought on a whim and that is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I heard so many great things about this book. The cover looks very pretty. I love the bright blue and this is a story that I would normally not pick up in a book form. I love murder mystery stories just like in a movie or a TV show. I have watched many of those things but I just never really show any interest in picking up like a murder mystery book but this one had so many great ratings on Goodreads I thought that I should just give it a try. Allingham Academy is a famous private school in Vermont. It was founded by Albert Allingham, an early 20th century tycoon who wanted to make a wonderful place full of riddles, twisting pathways, and gardens. A place, he said, where learning is a game. In 1936, shortly after the school opened, Allingham's wife and daughter, Iris and Alice, were kidnapped. The only real clue was a mocking riddle listing methods of murder signed with a frightening pseudonym, Truly Devious. Years later, true crime aficionado Stevie Bell is set to begin her first year at Ellingham Academy and she has an ambitious plan. She will solve this cold case. That is, she will solve the case when she gets a grip on her demanding new school life and her housemates. The inventor, the novelist, the actor, the artist, and the jokester. But something strange is happening. Truly Devious makes a surprise return and death revisits Ellingham Academy. The past has crawled out of his grave. Someone has gotten away with murder. I mean, doesn't that just sound absolutely intriguing? This is the first time with like a murder mystery book where I'm like, okay, I truly want to read this. It seems absolutely amazing. Then I have a book with deckled edges, which I, I'm not a big fan of deckled edges, to be honest. And that is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. And this is a not retelling, but a reinterpretation of how Lady Jane was killed. I believe that she ruled England for like a couple of days and then she was beheaded. I have never heard of the history of Lady Jane. The only thing that I know about this book is that everyone who have read this said that it was so funny and I believe there is sort of like a companion novel coming out in this series which is about Jane Eyre. I also don't know anything about Jane Eyre. <laughs> this will be my first like historical fiction book which I will read and I'm really excited about that. I have two books in a series and that is Cogheart and Moonlocket, both by Peter Bunzel, and these are middle grade books, which I am very excited about, especially after I've read Matilda. I just want to read so many more middle grade books. I don't really know what the stories are about. Well, I'm not going to read this one because that will be a spoiler for myself as well because it's the sequel. A Cogheart Adventure. Some secrets change the world in a heartbeat. Lily's life is in mortal peril. Her father is missing and now silver-eyed men stalk her through the shadows. What could they want from her? With her friends, Robert, the clockmaker's son, and Malkin, her mechanical fox, Lily is plunged into a murky and menacing world. Too soon, Lily realizes that those she holds dear may be the very ones to break her heart. 
Dun, dun, dun. But we're getting pretty close to the end. Then I have the female of the species by Mindy McGuinness and I know this cover is like in your face. It has amazing ratings on Goodreads and I think this is a contemporary novel told from different points of view. I think about five maybe. And this is like all about rape culture which sounds very interesting and I've heard nothing but great things about it so I want to find out for myself what I think of it and what exactly the story is. Again, like with Cockheart, this just sounds very vague and I don't even want to read the synopsis for you guys because it's that vague. Woo! Okay, so then I have a really big one which is called The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty? Chakraborty? I don't know how to pronounce her name. This book is blurbed by Lainey Taylor and Saba Tahir, which are both phenomenal authors. And I'm saying this while I haven't read any of their books, but based on many people's opinions, they are apparently amazing authors. I thought this was a young adult fantasy novel, but this is like an adult fantasy novel. I mean, I have been an adult for a whole year right now, so I should be able to do it. <laughs> it is just an absolutely stunning book. Not so much the front cover in my opinion, like I like it, but it's not the best, but these pages, are so stunning. So this is like a fantasy story about, I believe, 18th century Cairo. Rebel of the Sands is like a Middle Eastern fantasy novel. So this one, when I found out this is also like Middle Eastern, I just needed to have it. And it has such great ratings on Goodreads. I believe this is like a 4.4 out of five stars, which is just incredible. And then the last book that I have is The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. And this came in my February fairy loot box, I believe. This was one of my most anticipated books of the year and I still haven't picked it up. I don't know why. I won't be telling you guys the synopsis of this one because I feel like everyone has heard it a million times and if you haven't, look it up on Goodreads. So these are the 14 books which I bought over the past couple of months which are in my dorm. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. You guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages. Of course, I have Goodreads, Snapchat, Instagram, plus an email address and links to that will be in the description bar down below as well. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys in my next video.